Hello, this is Tyler Weaver, and I am welcoming you to the second part of a three-part series on building your first project with Moveit. And in this one, I'm going to show you something that's really cool. It's a set of tools that live technically outside of Moveit, but uh, are really critical to developing robot applications. One of the things that's really hard to do when working with a, like a serial robot arm is to understand what it's uh, like how the planning is working or how the executing is working without visualizations. Uh, and the reason is because all the planning and stuff is happening in like six or seven dimensional space and it's really hard to wrap your head around it even if you like, print stuff. Um, even if you're really familiar with the math, visualizations can really just make things easier for you. So uh, in this one, I'm going to introduce you to a series of tools uh, that was created by Dave called Move It Visual Tools. It builds on this other package called Arvis Visual Tools. Um, what it does is it provides hooks that you can write in C++ to cause Arvis to visualize things. So the first thing we got to do is add it as a dependency. Um, it's already built as part of the tutorials workspace. Um, we just have to add it to our package, uh, Hello Move It, that we created. So I grabbed this. Um, I'm going over here. I go to the package XML, and I'm going to add it here. Okay. All right. Um, the next thing I need to do is add a find package statement into CMake. So go over to CMake and add the find package statement. Um, and then lastly, we need to update this emit target dependencies. Uh, so that includes move it visual tools, which is pretty easy. There, uh, we got that. Um, lastly, we I'm going to add it as a header and build it to verify that like all that went correctly. Um, it's really important when you're developing software to work incrementally and verify your assumptions. Uh, it makes it much easier to catch things than like programming a whole bunch of stuff and then testing it and finding out it doesn't build for 47 different reasons. You have to separate all those reasons to debug it. You just build incrementally. It's, it makes your life a little easier. So we build and we'll verify that it builds. Um, here we go. Uh, there we are. We're building the Hello Move It package. Um, and it worked. All right. So on to the next step. So the first thing that we got to do is we have to spin the node in an executor. Now, if you did a bunch of the ROS2 tutorials, you know about this. Uh, ROS has a, one of the big things that's really powerful about ROS is you have these like services and publishers and subscribers and things like that. And, and it all has to happen asynchronously, which means that you have to have some other thread to service those callbacks. Um, because of how Move it Visual Tools works, we need to get that started. So we got to add this little bit of code. Uh, we need to add include thread at the top of our program. So here, um, that's from the standard library. And then the next thing is after we do the logger, um, then we have to uh, add the single threaded executor that's spinning. Um, it's going to spin the node that we created earlier. It's going to create a thread. I'm naming the thread spinner. Um, and then lastly, at the end, after the RCLCPP shutdown, we're going to join. Um, the reason we do it afterwards, after that, is because by calling this, it will cancel all the executors. And so this executor right here will return from the spin function so we can join the, join the thread. Okay, so this is a little bit of boilerplate raw stuff that we had to get out of the way. Now we can move on to the meat of it. Um, we're gonna create this thing called Move It Visual Tools. Um, oh, yeah, oh, we already included the header file, so we're good to go. We gotta create one of these uh, Move It Visual Tool objects. Um, it takes a handful of parameters, and I'll talk you through what those are. Um, I'm gonna copy this, uh, this block of code, and we're gonna paste it right after the move group interface. Um, again, there's an indention issue that I should figure out some way to fix, but anyway. Uh, we create this new thing. It takes, its constructor takes the node that it uses for these services. Um, the base link of the robot, that is needed for uh, when we give it uh, positions and space and stuff, we want it to be able to plan, um, or not plan, but be able to draw things relative to that base. So we need, 
you need a base a base link that we're going to use relative for drawing things. Um, this is uh, the default topic, um, our viz marker topic. I'll show you what that is later. And then lastly, we have to give it a robot model. Um, we are move group interface loads the robot model. Um, how it works is a little complicated, but here's an easy way to get a copy of it. So we got to give it a robot model. Uh, it has to know about the model of the robot for some some of his visualizations. And then I call it delete all markers. And really what that's for is like, if you run this program multiple times, it will, that, that keeps it from like drawing over itself basically. Um, and then I'm gonna load this remote control. Remote control is something really cool and I'm gonna show you in a bit what it is. Uh, what it does is it, it provides a really simple way for you to um, add these prompt statements to your program that let you step through it. So say you have some complicated problem or program that like did different things and, and you wanna pause the program in a certain place and be able to step through it. It's, it's sort of a debugging tool um, if you're, uh, you're working on figuring out how to do some complicated motion and move it, uh, this can be really helpful. So we're going to load remote control that sets up a service for it. Um, all right. Uh, the next thing we got to do is write some closures for visualizations. And I want to talk to you about closures. So closures, all a closure is, is a function essentially that keeps access to something in the local scope. So this first one, draw a title, is a, it, we use lambdas to create closures in C++. Um, it takes the, a reference to the Move It Visual Tools. This allows it to call Move It Visual Tools. Um, and then it takes a parameter called text. And what it does is it creates a, there, there's this, here's another one of these uh, lambdas that create a constant. This, this one is, um, you'll notice it has a translation Z of one meter. Um, what this does is, gives us a pose in space that is a meter above the base link of the robot. Remember, we did we gave it the base link of the robot here, so it uses that as the relative position. Um, and then it's going to call this thing called publish text, uh, which takes the pose that we created, um, the text that we passed in, and then some stuff about the pose. So we're going to use white and extra large font. And this is, it's really useful to have just a way to draw text in our viz so you can show sort of what your program is doing while people are looking, while you're looking at the visualization. So you don't have to like trace through the logs and stuff. Um, it's, it's just easy to have stuff in the same place. All right. The second thing is that prompt command that I told you about that like pauses it. This one's pretty basic. We're going to create a closure called prompt and we're going to call move visual tools prompt. And the last one is draw trajectory path. This one is really cool because what this one does is it um, will draw a line. We're going to call this uh, published trajectory line. It's going to draw a line that the end effector um, uh, will trace as you execute the trajectory. It's really helpful for visualizing sort of like how the robot's going to move roughly and how um, how efficiently the end effector is moving and stuff, and it, it helps. It's it's just a useful tool. So, anyway, we have these three closures. The last one, um, there's a we need this joint model group pointer thing, and we can use we can get the robot model again. We need the robot model for something, and then we can get the joint model group. And the joint model group is um, it's an object that represents data about the uh, group of things like in this case the panda arm so that's what that's what we're doing um and we pass in a trajectory trajectory in this case is just a message um and you'll see how we get that out of the plan later anyway let's go back to the website and get more code um all right so the next thing we're going to do is before we do this plan remember this block could code right here which does the plan we're going to get have a prompt to have us press next and then we're going to draw a title saying we're planning um, after you press next. And then there's this trigger thing, and that's because Move it Visual Tools, um, it could send a ton of messages. And uh, this is more important once you um, start using it more heavily. But what it does is it batches up the messages it's going to send to Arviz and does them all at once. Um, this trigger this tells it's it's sort of like the um, the like a render command. It's like when Arviz is going to do all the things you asked it to do. So I'm gonna grab that code and we'll go back over to our editor. Um, and we'll put it before this plan. Um, all right. 
Now, the next thing is under execute plan, uh, the plan, one of the, uh, the plan is a message, and one of the uh, fields in it is called trajectory. It's technically trajectory underscore, and that's, that's a trajectory message we need. Um, so if we succeed, I'm going to draw the path and then ask you to press next. Um, and when you press X, I'm going to switch to the title to executing. I'm going to trigger that and then execute the plan. And if it failed, I want to draw a planning failed um, and trigger in visualization so you don't have to look at the air uh, in the log. Just make it a little bit easier. So I copy that. Uh, we'll come over here um, and edit the execute the plan section of the code. Um, all right, now we just need to build it and run it. This is the whole thing. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to build it. Um, oh, the next thing is we need to change our Arvis setup. So while it's building, um, there's a series of screenshots here that talk you through it, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. Um, we come over to here to Arvis. Uh, we already turned off motion planning. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the Arvis Visual Tools uh, thing. That adds this thing down here. That's the next button that we're going to push later. Uh, the next thing we have to do is add a marker array. Um, this is the topic it's going to use to draw visualizations on here. Um, it's, we don't want this topic. We actually want a different one. I have to go back to uh, the instructions to find it. Um, that's the one we added that constant for. Um, we added a marker array. We clicked OK. It's called Arvis Visual Tools. It's the one we're, we're using. Uh, the topic we wanted to use. All right, um, we're good to go. All right, so if I come over here and I run the program again, um, you'll notice it says waiting to continue. Press next to continue. So we'll come back over here. N nothing has changed. I'm going to press next, and now you see it says it's planning. Um, the planning failed. Um, well, we run it again. Sometimes plans fail, uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and it's way more complicated than the scope of this video. Um, but I go back, and we can try executing it again, and um, it should ask us to press next again. All right, it's planning. All right, it planned successfully, and here's that tool path that I told you about. Shows, shows what the, uh, technically the end of the last link, not the, uh, not the end of the tool, is going to trace. If I press next, it'll execute the path. Um, and you see the robot moving along the path that we planned. And that's the whole thing. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you'll join me for the third and final episode of building your Hello Move It project. In that one, we will add a collision uh, object to the environment and plan around it. Um, thank you for watching.